Good morning, beloved family. This is your beloved brother, Minister Melvin. After I am your beloved minister, your beloved brother, I am not your dog. Beloved brothers and sisters, I'm not going to be long. I just need about two or three of you, two, three minutes. You know, we're all over this young Dolph case, and we're constantly seeking ways to watch out for our babies. And we're seeking ways to not be selfish over here at the house under God in heaven on the Melvin Show show. A lot of people, even though we cover the Young Dolph case, we cover everything associated with tyranny, stupidity, and evil inflicted upon us from our open enemies. Endowed in white supremacy. This and, 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 and as we and, and, and as your beloved brother fight hard and put my life on the line. You know, beloved brothers and sisters, I love y'all. They are hanging our beloved brothers. They hanging black people. Why don't y'all do me a favor and go Google the recent lynchings and hangings? These ain't no damn suicides. Jones was found dead in a park, hanging from a set of monkey bars. Another family to go through this. Police say the father of three killed himself, but his family believes he was murdered. I'm Justin Carter. This is TSR Investigates. Dante Jones. Put him in your prayer. On June 17, 2022, Latina Bedford Dean says that she got a call that no parent should ever get. Her son, Dante Jones, was found dead by a stranger in a park in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. It's an affluent suburb right outside of Philadelphia. It's about 88.1% white, according to U.S. Census data. Dean says that she started asking questions. Bluebell was not an area that he frequented, and his wallet was missing. Dean recalls a conversation she had with her son about a year ago. He said, Mom, if anyone ever tell you that I committed suicide, don't believe them. I love life and my family too much. So when detectives told her Jones hung himself with a military coat about an hour away from home, she didn't believe it. She says that she had just spoken with him around 1140 the night before about having an argument with the mother of his youngest child. What did he tell you that night? She was saying things and he was like in shock, like, why are you trying to make me look like I'm a bad guy? Like, why are you lying? Like, I didn't do that. I said, listen, go home. And he said, okay, I'm going to go home. He went home and that was the last time that I heard from him. The next day, he was dead. This is the statement we got from the Whitpain Township Police Department. It reads, Around 7.45 a.m., a resident walking on a trail reported seeing a man leaning against a piece of playground equipment. An officer and paramedic responded immediately and found Mr. Jones unresponsive, and officers found nothing suspicious after conducting a grid search. But his family says there were defensive wounds all over his body. The natural human instinct is to fend somebody off if they're about to hang you. When we actually finally was able to see the, the uh, identify his body after days of pronouncing my brother dead um it showed that he had multiple bruises on his body he had a scratch underneath his on the side of his neck um and y'all love these damn he had marks on his shoulder he had marks underneath i hope y'all know they christians he had marks on his side ribs on the on the side of his buttocks and in between his groin you would think that there would be marks underneath of his throat and there wasn't any so what we've seen versus what they're telling us is severely... They covering it up! So there, there hey, look, y'all. I maybe love y'all. Maybe he was killed before You that. know... That's uh, a very strong possibility. And placed there. And yes. placed there. Yes. Um, and you got to think, again, this is Juneteenth weekend. You find a black male dead in a majority all-white township um, on Juneteenth weekend. 
supposedly hung. They also say that Jones was about six foot five, and police told them that his feet and flip flops were still positioned on the ground. I said he's taller than the monkey bar, number one. Number two, his weight, that thing would rip. How can someone hang themselves and their feet is still on the ground? No, we know what happened. You know, beloved brothers and sisters. This is Wentz Park. A lot of y'all. You can see on this map, it's just steps away from the Whitpain Township Police Station. The family asked detectives immediately about cameras in the area. And the police he, did. He said to me, because you know, as children in the playground, you really don't want to, you know, watch children. They told her that the only functional camera was not recording and was not being monitored by an officer that morning. They lied. Oh, we don't have anything on your car. Uh, your beloved brothers and sisters, you, 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 you know, this is so painful for me as a minister. To up here. I said, did you run his tab, his easy pass? Oh, he must have came in the back way where there was no cameras. I was like, the back way, no cameras? I got lost trying to get in the front. So he's, as far as I know, and I talk to his friends, He's never been to Blue Bell, VA. No, they took him there and hang him there. Why would her son travel an hour from home to an unknown suburban township, park his car near a police station with no cameras, just to commit suicide? She says she also got suspicious when the coroner refused to conduct an autopsy because police that same day ruled his death a suicide. She says to make matters worse as well, police reopened the park to Saturday activities just hours after the body was discovered. You're not going to make that my son's narrative. My son worked too hard to and loved life too much to take his life. You were unable to check his neck to see if he was hung. You were unable to check his wrist to see if he was handcuffed. Because, you know, you know, Beloved brothers and sisters, I'm going to go ahead and and get off of that right there. You know, family, you know, it's sad. And, you know, the more and more I look at stuff like this, I begin to see that the only thing that's going to wake people up is as if something like this happens to them and your beloved brother minister melvin after i can't sit back and, and, and wait around for anything if y'all have any information 610-279-9033 that is to help the family if you know some some oreo cookies responsible and some cheese nips assalam i leave each and every last one of you with some last words from the family. The family says that Jones loved his three children and worked for an airline company after returning home two years ago from serving in the army. If you go fight for your country, you go put your life on the line for your country. But yet, in America, it doesn't seem like you could do the same thing. And that's not right. It's not right. My brother's in the I hate this shit. Jones's family did hire a private. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is too much. These bastards are still lynching us. I can't even get y'all to go over to the Melvin Show show. When they tried to lynch me. By the grace of almighty God I got away. These were Christians. Supposed to be a It's okay to go fight for your country. Only to come home and get lynched. That's why I say ain't no black man got no damn business in no damn army. Unless it's the army of the FOI. I greet each and every last one of you with the greeting words of peace. We said in the Arabic language taught to us by our leader, teacher, mentor, and guide in the nation of Islam, the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. Assalamu alaikum.